Anyway, let's get going. Welcome, Dr. Joy. We're so excited to have this time to talk writing, wellness, and community with you. And our first question is, what type of writing is involved in podcasts? Mm, that's a really great question. So it, it really kind of depends on your podcast. So for my podcast, um, I have a mixture of solo episodes and then other episodes where I am interviewing another guest therapist. Um, so for my solo episodes, typically I write myself a script um, so that I kind of have an outline of what kinds of topics I want to talk about. Um, so in this most recent episode that I released this week, um, I talked a little bit about like current events um, and then also answered some audience questions. So I had a script for like what the questions were and what kinds of things I wanted to highlight. But with, when I'm interviewing a guest, I will typically just have like questions to get me started. Um, but I typically kind of like to follow the guest's um, train of thought and kind of pick up on anything that I find incredibly interesting. So it really kind of depends. You know, some, some podcasts are like audio dramas. So it's kind of like oh, watching a movie, but in your headphones. Um, and they are all the way scripted with different characters and those kinds of things. So it really kind of depends on your podcast. Um, I will ask you the next question. So what is the best way to promote and advertise podcasts? Because we have um, a series of mentees who have started working on that and kind of moving up levels, maybe social media, how to kind of work it in. Mm -hmm. So the re the best way is word of mouth. Um, so that has been the thing that has biggest has been the biggest factor in promoting my podcast. So one person will listen and then they will tell somebody else that they think might enjoy it and then just kind of like a chain reaction um, but it works best if you actually tell your listeners to tell other people right so people typically respond well to what's called a call to action um, so if you give them directions to do something so at the end of my show I typically say um, text two of your girlfriends right now and tell them to check out this episode as well so that is a really really great method for promoting your podcast because typically people who listen to podcasts listen to more than one podcast right so I don't only listen to my podcast I probably listen to at least another four or five episodes of other people's podcasts. And so if they're already kind of a podcast listener, it's easy for them to say, oh, I'll check out this new show as well. Um, but if you're talking to someone who is not necessarily familiar with what it means to listen to a podcast, you might need to do a little bit of work in terms of telling them this is how you find it on the website or on your phone. Hey, this is how you subscribe. Um, so things like that. Social media is also a great way um, to promote your podcast. So that's something that you mentioned. So people typically respond to um, if there's like one clip from your podcast that was like a great question or a great you know segment that you you feel like a lot of people would, would respond to. If you put that up on um, some place like Instagram or TikTok. So TikTok is actually now TikTok feels a little bit. Like I'm trying to figure out what's going on over there, but TikTok actually has been converting really well um, for people for podcasts because people will like play a segment and then react to it, or they will just play a segment and then people want to know like, oh, how do I hear the rest of that? And then you can guide them to the link where they can listen to the podcast. Yeah, I agree with you about TikTok. <laughs> 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 there's some fun stuff there but it kind of feels really hard to like find your niche um but what I hear is that people like once you find like your TikTok community then you are all in yeah true true and mm -hmm. also what is your favorite topic for podcasts so I really love pop culture podcasts. So I spend a lot of time like watching TV and, you know, like paying attention to what's going on on social media. So I like to like listen to podcasts that will do a recap of, you know, kind of what's been going on in pop culture for the week. Um, so The Read is one of my favorite podcasts. I think we talked about that last time I was here. Um, there's another one called The Pop Life Podcast that I also really enjoy. Um, and when in, there's a show on HBO called Insecure, and when it is in season, there's a recap podcast called Insecurity, um, where they kind of do a recap of the, of the last or the latest season or the latest episode, and then, you know, kind of share their thoughts about it. So I think shows are doing a really good job like paying attention to how many people are actually looking to continue that conversation like after a show goes off um, and then we'll make a podcast out of it so those are some of my favorites um so on the topic of culture how do you feel like podcasts influence culture 
You know, I really think a podcast can be whatever you want. And so I think it's just a really good way for people to like talk about the things that are important to them. Um, and then, you know, podcasts can get really big, you know, so each month, like a half a million people listen to my podcast. And so when you think about like your ability to like influence culture or to kind of have a slice of culture really highlighted on your podcast, you really have the potential to, you know, really have a large stake in that conversation. And I really think it's cool that like anybody can start a podcast, right? You know, like I record my podcast from my closet. And so, you know, and I love to hear that so many of you have, have started a podcast. Um, so I think the barrier to entry is, is really low. And so if you have something to say and you feel like there'd be other people who would be interested in joining joining you for those conversations or hearing what you have to say, then a podcast can be a really great way to do that. Yeah, I agree. I think people underestimate how much writing and audio affects the culture and the mindset. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and this also is kind of related to culture, but also politics. How do you view the intersection of women's rights and mental health? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so I think anytime you are talking about rights, you are inherently talking about mental health, right? You know, so we know that there are so many oppressive and discriminatory um, practices in place that kind of keep women from being able to show up in the world in the same ways and to really kind of live our best lives, so to speak. And so all of that impacts our mental health, right? Like if we feel like we are in a workplace where people are talking down to us, um, or no matter how much we work, we don't get paid as the same as men in the office, right? Like all of those kinds of things impact your mental health. And so I think anytime you're talking about human rights, you cannot uh, separate that from mental health. All of that to me is tied together. Yeah, very much so on being paid less than men. Sadly. <laughs> right. So bouncing off of that, so how do you feel like podcasts can take conversations of social justice? Yeah, I think back to kind of what I said earlier, um, the fact that, you know, like before, if you were somebody who like wanted to get your message out to the world, maybe you had to try to get on CNN or MSNBC, or you had to like try to write into your local, local newspaper or something like that. Like it just felt like there were far more barriers for people to be able to share their news and information with the world. Um, and now you can just pick up your phone and do it. Like if you wanted to start a podcast tonight, you could download some software, talk about what you you wanted to talk about and have it uploaded and then however many people could listen right and so I think um, when when you're thinking about like social justice it really allows multiple different and very diverse voices to kind of come to the forefront because then you can find your people you know so I think that that is one of the the cool things about podcasts is that you kind of put it out there and you know most people are kind of anxious of like is anybody going to listen to this am I going to just be talking to myself right um but usually you find your people right like people are looking for um the same kinds of topics that you're interested in and so I do think it just gives a a very cool way to kind of connect with people that you might not have had the opportunity to otherwise yeah and I guess this is more connecting with people face to face, but let's say a podcast is not enough to support someone emotionally. If a young girl or anyone can't see a therapist due to cost or availability, what do you think they should do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I make this disclaimer every week on my podcast that um, I hope you love listening to and learning from the podcast, but it's not meant to be a substitute for therapy, um, you know, so we have some great conversations on the podcast. I answer community questions, give lots of resources, but it's not meant to be therapy. It can be a great supplement and a great compliment maybe to what you're doing in therapy, but it definitely is not meant to replace therapy. Um, so I typically will tell people, so one, we have a directory on our website at therapyforblackgirls.com. Um, so anybody who is looking to work with a therapist can use our directory to find someone there. Um, you can also, if you have insurance, look at your, um, like insurances usually have websites with like all of their providers listed. So that's another way to um, meet with a therapist. Also local colleges and universities 
um, typically have training clinics. And this is especially important for people who maybe don't have insurance. Um, they usually have training clinics with therapists who are learning to be therapists, right? So I worked in a, in a training clinic and was supervised by somebody who was already licensed when I was learning to become a therapist. And that can be a great way for people who maybe don't have, um, you know, just an unlimited amount of resources. If they're looking for mental health services, they can typically find that at a university or a college counseling center. Um, so would you kind of consider your podcast to be self-care in a sense? And branching off that, what does self-care look like to you? Mm -hmm. So I think the podcast can be self-care. Um, and you know, self-care, I feel like is this word that has kind of like exploded right and so a lot of times people are using this term self-care to like sell us stuff right so like go oh, buy this new body wash and get this new candle and you know and all of those things can be great right like that definitely can help you to feel good in the moment but self-care really sometimes is not as glamorous as candles and bubble baths um sometimes it is about saying no to our best friend when they are trying to make us do something that we really do not want to do right so it looks like setting boundaries with people and saying no more often so that we have time for ourselves and really have time to kind of, you know, unwind from the day. Um, I think a really good self-care practice is journaling. Um, so I typically encourage people like early in the morning before everybody else is up or later in the evening when you're in your room alone, um, just jotting down, like, how have you felt through the day? Is there anything that kind of stood out for you? That really helps you to kind of listen to your intuition and really kind of tap into like, what is going on with your own thoughts and feelings. And I think it can be really cool to kind of track that across time um, to kind of see if there are any patterns that, that kind of pop up. Um, so self-care really is any practice that you need to kind of just keep going. So, you know, candles and bubble baths, like I say, can be great, but sometimes it looks, you know, just grittier in terms of like setting boundaries and, you know, making sure that we are getting some sunshine and some good physical activity. Out of curiosity, do you think self-care is more like taking an introspective approach to how you're feeling or kind of being more escapist and just doing something that gives you endorphins or dopamine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think both of those things can be self-care, right? So self-care definitely involves um, taking like self-assessment is what you're talking about, right? Like being reflective and how am I feeling and what's going on for me here? Like that definitely can be a part of it because you can't care for yourself if you don't know how you're feeling emotionally. Um, but escapism is also really good, right? Like when we are completely stressed out and we just like, I can't do anymore. It is great to kind of throw on your next Netflix binge and just kind of veg out for a while, right? Um, so both of those things can be appropriate at different times. Um, so we have a question from the chat about what is your personal favorite form of self-care? Ooh, so when the weather is nicer, and I'm here in Atlanta, um, so that is a good thing. We've had relatively nice weather most for the latter part of this week. Um, so when I can get outside and like walk around my neighborhood, that is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I also am from Louisiana originally, and we have this frozen treat called a snowball. Um, and I think they call them different things in different places of the, in the country, right? Um, but there's one in like downtown Atlanta that my family and I will go to sometimes on Sundays and like sit in the back of the car and eat snowballs. Um, so that is also a great way for me to kind of spend some time with my family, um, but also do something that I really enjoy. Yeah, out of curiosity, have you ever considered maybe making a book of many quotes that you think are relevant or just empowering self-care phrases? Hmm. I have not thought about a book related to self-care. Now, I do have um, a workbook. So when I work with clients, typically my specialty is helping um, women recover after breakups. And so I do have a book um, related to like journaling after a breakup and like kind of putting those pieces together. Um, but I had not thought about a book for self-care and like quotes that could be something to add to my list. Oh gosh, your podcast like two months ago. Um, <laughs> so specifically in your podcast you talk a lot of, or like you are involved in community and that kind of is how you branch off and things like that why do you feel like community is so important in creative endeavors 
Yeah. So I think, you know, we have like the, our, our independent thoughts, right? Like we have the ideas that we come up with, but I think it can be good to kind of workshop those sometimes with other people, right? Because sometimes something sounds really, really great in our heads and then we tell it to someone else and they're like, I don't get it. Right. And so I think community really helps us to refine our ideas. And I think it keeps us honest. Um, I also think that community is really important so that we don't feel isolated, right? So sometimes, especially in creative fields, um, it's really very solitary, right? So if you are working on music or writing, you know, a poem or writing a book or something, usually a lot of that is solitary. And so I think community is what helps to keep you grounded, um, is what gives you fresh ideas. You know, I hear a lot of writers talk about when they're having writer's block, they will kind of go out and do some people watching or pay attention to, you know, what people are sharing on Instagram or something, right? So I think being connected to your community can also keep your creative juices flowing, so to speak. Um, so I think community is important in a lot of different ways, especially for a creative person. So you said you specialize or you, you focus a lot about breakups. What do you think, let's say, is the number one advice you can give someone who's just been through mm -hmm. one? Ooh, this is such a good question. The best piece of advice I have and the, the area that my clients fight me the most on is disconnecting with their ex on social media. <laughs> so they want to stay kind of like, you know, following along with what's happening. And I just want to see, you know, like how sad they are and how much they miss me. Um, but you really are doing yourself a disservice when you stay connected with your ex on social media um, because you are likely creating all kinds of stories based on like one Instagram story that you see or one TikTok um, that probably is not entirely true and really, really damaging yourself in the process. Um, so it's really, really difficult. A lot of people fight me on it, um, but it is really important to at some point work yourself up to disconnecting with your ex on social media. I feel so, I feel like that was directly at me. <laughs> Um, that's, that's really good advice. <laughs> I should have probably listened to it, but um, <laughs> there, like are other mediums that you can use that you have so far. So podcasts are very media technology, and writing is another tool. But what do you feel like is something that you haven't used yet? Haven't used yet for what reason? Like um, mediums. So maybe kind of different types of art. If you wanted to do that, maybe you know, in terms of like promoting, if you want to try a different style. Oh, got it. Hmm. I don't really know. Yeah, I do a lot. I mean, clearly with the podcast and I do a lot of speaking. Um, I don't know if there's anything that I really haven't done yet that I'm like looking forward to. I feel like I have a good sense of like what my strengths are and what they are not. Now, I would love to be able to sing, but that is sadly not a gift that I have. Um, so I feel like it involves me being honest with like where my gifts actually are. I also feel like generally society oftentimes just indirectly tells women to dislike themselves and have lower self-esteem. That's why podcasts are important because they empower women internally. So are there, let's say, any techniques you could think of to quickly boost your self-esteem? Yeah, so I like to encourage people to make lists. Um, I don't remember if we talked about this last time I was here, but I encourage people to like make themselves like a note or a, no, a folder on their phones, but you have to give it a good fun name. Um, so my folder is, it, is called You Did That. Um, which is, you know, where I put when people send me nice emails and say, oh, I really enjoyed this episode of the podcast, or um, when somebody tells me they found a therapist in our directory, like the things that really make me feel good and like I'm doing good work. Um, and that can be helpful for those days when you're not feeling so great, or if you get a bad, you know, review or a bad, a bad information on a, a report card or something. Um, those kinds of, you know, reminders are helpful that you have done good work in the world. Um, so I'd encourage people to like make themselves a little list of those things so that you can have those when you feel like you need it. Hold on. Sorry, I was still muted. Um, so why do you feel it's important to support girls right now with work? And yeah, <laughs> that's a question, sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I think it is important to support programs like this because I think it just affirms that our voices matter, right? And so whether that be through speaking, whether that be through writing, I think it just affirms that what we have to say is important. And I think the younger you are when you can like start learning that message, the better you are in terms of being able to hold on to that when you're older, um, you know, because there's just so much in the world that like wants to tell women to be quiet, right? And I really think that when we can affirm for young girls that it is okay to speak your mind no matter what, no matter if you are nervous, then you are all better for that. And the world is better because we are sharing our ideas. Thank you so much, Dr. Joy. And thank you so much for being here tonight. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure.